Hello and welcome to another edition of Handstand Jam. This is a playful practice exploring everything and anything standing on your hands and eventually getting into prep and practice for hand standing. We'll use the wall for the most part for standing on the hands, but if you have a free balance practice in the middle of the room, feel free to handstand in the middle of the room when we get there. As always, do your best to your abilities and modify according to your needs. Okay. Anything I say, if you want to modify in a particular way, go for it. Take care of yourself as we move through the practice. So today's practice, we'll go through mobility work always, opening up the joints, some lotion for the motion to move through the ocean of life. Yeah. And in particular to hands and wrists, shoulders, arms, and we'll get into hips and legs a little bit too. All right, and then today we'll focus a little bit on some, in the beginning, some core exploration, lying down, and then eventually getting into some movements and positions with the arm, and getting into what it takes to do the handstand. So arm flexion work, uh, and some rotation work as well. All right, so let's start seated on the ground, Okay. On a blanket, if you like, I have a blanket here folded in half. Okay, so you can sit flat on the ground or have a little bit of height for the buttock bone to sit as you take your legs wide. Other props you may want to have, a couple blocks if you do, great. Okay. And possibly a chair. I plan for a little bit using a chair of any kind. I have a folding chair. Okay. I'll get out in a little bit. So just getting the legs open on the ground, take the hands around behind you, press your fingertips down, just lift the chest up, extend through the heels and press through the thighs down. So already we're in the legs. Part of the hand standing, yes, it is the base, the foundation is the hands, the wrists, the, hand, the arms, but what holds us up upside down is also our legs. So always paying attention to what the legs are doing. Now keep your legs firm and heavy. Let's do our arm rotation, so shoulder blades, take your arms forward, curl your fingers, squeeze those fists, and now reach forward with the arm so you feel the shoulder blades spread. Then draw your arm bones back so the shoulder blades squeeze, go forward, stay forward and lower your shoulder blades down, away from your ears, then reach back, lift the shoulder blades up, reach forward, shoulder blades down, back, up, forward, down, take the arms a little wider, and our reverse direction. So just getting the shoulder mobility going here. Bring the arms closer, closer, you can open up the hands, as long as it doesn't hurt, and join the palms together, and keep with those shoulder movements. Nicely done. Now catch your inner knees, bend the legs, and sit in this position with the knees bent out to the side. You can hold on with fingers, hands around the feet, lift your chest up, and just let the groins, the pelvis open up with the knees bent. External rotation out to the side. All right, then open the legs wide out again. We may have done this before. Okay. So just put a block down for a moment, interlock your fingers. And if you practice the handstand jams classes with me, some of the work will be familiar, some a little different. Always approach with a fresh mind, every practice a new practice. So interlock your fingers and now rotate slowly with the hands and wrists. Like you have a stick or a sword or something <laughs> and you're moving it around in a circle slowly. Now switch the direction of hand wrist rolling. This never gets old. Switch the interlock of the fingers. So you can do this before practice as we're doing right now, the start, during practice, or even at the end, any time during the day, wrist rolls. And then switch direction. And then release, shake out the hands, shake out the arms. 
All right, now wrist waves. Okay, so interlock fingers. You can raise one elbow arm up like this, great. You're gonna lower that wrist down, flip to the other side. So there's a little bit of a wave with the hands, wrists, and then down, up, push away, down. So the hand goes through flexion palm is in or the hands are down and then we'll get into a little bit of extension later now switch direction it may feel the same to you might even look the same so if I'm going up from here out down go up the other way out down you can make it a little faster if you want Switch. Ooh, the other side is trickier, yeah? All right, shake it out. All right, so now, so if you need to sit in a different leg position, because we're in this wide-legged position for some time, you can switch it up. You can bend the knees, sit like this, all good. Let's do a little bit of wrist rotation, holding a block okay, against the forearm, like you're shaking someone's hand like this. And just observe to see that the forearm is not going to turn in and out, all right? So turn your hand in and keep the palm flat if you can, not cupping the hand, but flat. And point the fingers down, point the hand out, up, in, down, out, up, in. Now reverse direction, checking to see forearm is not turning. You can use your other hand to block motion at the forearm. That's an option. We're going to continue like this, but now with the fist, curl your fingers, make a fist, and then go in with the knuckles, fist, down, out, up, in, one more time, and then switch direction, out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up. All right, let's switch it over to the other hand. Keep in mind, we could spend a lot of time here. Not a bad idea to spend a lot of time on the wrist, yeah? So much work we do with our hands, even if we're not handstanding, other things we do. So a lot of love for wrist mobility. But keep in mind, we're on the underside of the forearm right now. You could do it on the, uh, the outside elbow. I'm sorry, the outside forearm bone. You could do it on the underside, backside, different hand positions. You could keep switching up and do the same thing. All right, let's take the hand in, hand down, out, up. In, down, out, up. Now switch direction so the hand goes out, it goes down. Without turning the forearm, turn the hand. And I'll say this again as a reminder, it's practicing with care, that there isn't any pinching or painful sensations through this rotation. If that's the case, make the circle a little smaller. Continue to move slowly, curl your fingers. Let's go in, up, so if there's any pinch here, I wouldn't go so far up. When I go down, if there's any pinch on the underside, I wouldn't go so far down. So you have to gauge that effort, that it feels good, smooth, and steady. No pain, no sharp feelings. Smooth feelings. Switch direction if you haven't already. And release, shake it out. Okay. All right, so now we'll take a little break from the hand rotation, but put the hands on the ground behind us, bend the knees, come forward off the support, and now let's move the legs side to side. So I'm moving my legs to my right side, then lift up and over. If you wanna mirror me, you can mirror me. Okay, all good, this could be your right side. Otherwise it's my left, over and out. So there's a little rotation of waist and chest, rotation of legs, hips, then turning more towards, I'm gonna to say my right side. So you can mirror me, it could be your left or do your right side as well. Take the hands to frame your outer knee and inner calf region here. Press down, lift up, and keep that back leg heavy, front leg heavy, and do a little like push-up like action, bending your elbows back and in, just bring your trunk down, chest down, and then push back up. Go again, so adding a little load into this externally, Rotated leg and lifting up. If you want to make it harder, face your foot, 
and then fold forward. If you want to make it a little, a little easier, face away from the leg and then come down. Now stay in the position, take the hands behind you. So turning from your waist, chest towards the knee, then turn chest towards calf, ankle, foot, look beyond your foot. So a little more internal rotation exposure for the back leg. Now keep your front knee down, the one that we're pushing over. Keep that down, lift your back knee up off the ground. Lower it down, lift it up, lower it down, lift it up, and then roll over, up and over to the other side. So sitting in this position, make yourself comfortable. So if something is uncomfortable, you can move the leg forward, move the leg back. You could sit on a block for this front leg outer hip. Also block outside the front knee shin region so you can make yourself comfortable. Frame the hand inside, outside the leg, and then bend your elbows. You can go out or slightly in as you bring chest and head down. And push up, do it again. Keeping the back leg heavy, front leg gets heavier as you lower down, press it down to come up. Face your front foot a little bit, then bend forward, come out. Face away from the leg a little easier. A nice little twist there. Come down. Now, stay in the position. Bring your hands behind you. Try to keep that front knee, outer knee, shin down. Turn to face your back thigh. Turn to face your back calf, foot. And turn away. Look behind. Look away from the foot. And then come out. Keep that front knee down. Lift your back knee up. Back knee comes down, lift your back knee up, back knee comes down, up, down, Ooh. and then come up. Straightening the legs out, you can sit on that blanket height behind you again. We're going to do an upper back rotation. Find one of your blocks, take it long and tall, long and narrow I should say. If you don't have a block, just give yourself a hug here like this, otherwise wrap your arms around the block. So now we're going to go for upper back rotation, thighs down, legs heavy, press the block into the chest, inhale, and as you exhale, round your back, so flexion of spine, and then turn to your right, hug that block in, side bend to a back bend, over to the other side, forward, down, once again, same side. And let's go the other way. Yeah, so we're just getting major joints of the body open for our movement. Rotational movements, you can go slow, steady, or you can go a little bit faster. All good. All right, good job with that. All right, now let's get into our core work. So bend the knees. The knees and thighs open wide. And then we're going to lie down. Okay, so on this blanket support. Okay. You can have just the blocks out to the side. I won't use them just yet. All right, lying down, back. So blanket is right at the top of that buttock region below the sacrum, or part of it's touching the sacrum, but off the lower back. That keeps the lower back feeling like a little rounded. So tuck the buttocks in a little bit so the lower back feels rounded. Then lift the feet up off the ground. You can press your hands, palms down, arms down into the ground. Bring the knees, thighs into the chest. And then away and slowly lowering down without losing that roundness feeling in your lower back. Slowly tap the feet down into the ground. And lift the feet up. Tuck the tailbone in. Bring the knees, thighs in towards your chest. And then detach away without arching in your lower back. Okay, and then bend your elbows. Bring knees to elbows. Lift your neck and head up. Lower your neck and head down. Lift your neck and head up. Look between your legs. Look up towards the ceiling or the sky forward, and then down, lower down. 
I enjoy practicing outside. If you have that space and luxury, I should say, a blessing, I feel quite lucky to have this space to practice outside and just enough amount of shade and sunlight coming in. All right. And the sun's going to keep creeping in, so the stripe pattern <laughs> will continue to be exposed over my body. And uh, hope you can see me okay. It's all good. If you can't, just listen to the instructions, follow the movements, and play along. Make it a playful, exploratory practice experience. Most importantly, having fun. All right? So now, what are we going to do? We're going to bring the knees to the elbows, elbows to the knees. Now, if you need to hold your head like this, all good. Or that's where the other block would come in. Okay? You could hold like this. Okay? or even rest like this, okay? if that's too much for the neck and head. Okay. Or you can rest like this. Block is on the ground, head is on the ground. Let's just do it like this just so I can show you. Okay? I'm going to detach one leg and arm away, lower the arm and leg down, but tuck the tailbone in more, pressing that opposite knee into the arm, elbow into the knee, and then slowly attach knee and elbow back. Let's go to the other side. So as the leg and arm detach away, they lower down. And then come back slowly, attach. Continue like this with the block support or no block support. Keep shoulders lifted. Detach leg and arm away. Lower arm and leg down. Keep pressing opposite elbow into that knee and thigh. And then attach. And detach. Opposite side. Lower down. Reaching back, come in, attach, feet down, arms down. You can remove the brick if you were using it. Take a breather here. <laughs> Press your feet down, lift your hips up, a little hip extension. All right, now, okay, something similar but a little different. So lift your shins up off the ground, take your hands to the thighs, so end of the thighs, above the knees, press away, and increase that pressure of moving your thighs away with your hand, move the knees into the hands. More pressure, hands into knees, knees into hands, lift your neck and head up, look between your legs, increase that pressure of thighs moving back to the hands, hands into the thighs, breathe here, and then lower down, rest down. So if you took the class last week, I was talking about isometric pressure, where you initiate movement without actually moving. So this is also isometric pressure, pushing, pulling opposite direction, or pressing both opposite direction, knees this way, hands this way. Feels like you're about to move, but you're resisting that movement. And in that, you're feeling some reflexive core work get turned on. All right. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel a little... <laughs> A shade structure here to block some sunlight and one of the things to I'll adjust it to, to attach that sheet <laughs> just drop down all right let's see how this goes let's continue so here we go lift the shins up parallel to the ground move your thighs away with your hands lock out your arms arms straight tuck the tailbone in lower back feels around it okay. now detach one leg and arm away when the arm goes back behind you extend the hand so as if the fingertips want to reach towards the ground, like handstand position. Then bring the arm and leg back in, attach. Take the other arm and leg away, extend the hand. So palm is up and then it goes down, palm is behind you. Like reaching towards a wall, fingertips down to the ground. Attach, let's go again. Lift up, option, lift your neck and head up. Reach with that arm back, heel of the hand reaching back. Keep those ribs moving in. Come up. Go the other way. The other leg, I should say. Reach back, reach back, reach back. Keep that pressure of hand to thigh, thigh to hand. And come up. Ooh. Feet down. Take a little pause, a little rest. Knees, thighs apart, feet together. I'll adjust the <laughs> my little support here. All right, got that adjusted. All right, so just to clarify, hand flexion like this, okay? hand extension like this. So when we're taking the arm back, it was going into extension. 
Take a moment to just sit any which way. You can sit cross-legged, that's fine, or legs wide. Take one arm up, I'm taking my right arm up, and then extending the hand, use your other hand to hold on to your ribs and draw those ribs down as you elevate arm, shoulder up, and try to move the arm slightly back without hurting, arm back, shoulder up, ribs down. Lift your chin and move your neck and head slightly back. Look up towards the hand. Look down towards the chest. Forward and down. Other side. Okay, so the idea is you can sit any which way. You could even sit like this. Different leg position will interact with the arm and chest differently. I'm just choosing to sit cross-legged right now. So arm is going up. This is flexion of arm. Then the extension of hand or wrist. Bring the arm a little forward. Use your other hand to draw the ribs down. As you raise the arm shoulder up, and then moving the arm shoulder back. Push with the heel of the hand up. Draw those ribs down as you move the arm up and back. And then down. All right, so that's our hand standing position, yeah? When you're up at the wall or even in the middle of the room, if you're trying to go for the straight arm handstand, some folks may explore and experiment with arm bent handstand. And there's so many kinds of handstands. If you're doing a yoga practice, there's different principles of alignment you can explore. If you're a gymnast, which I'm not, yeah, but I'm sure they have their own guidelines or principles to play with. If you're into acrobatics, if you're into capoeira, break dancing, any which way getting into handstanding, yeah. There's probably different, so many different ways to explore, right? So to each their own and to each for their own practice, whatever you're up for, yeah? Always in context. So now, bring the blocks out in front. Watch what I do. You can watch and do. So using our, from our core work we just did to begin to roll up forward, into the squatting position, then rolling back. And I use that block as a little ramp. I'm sorry, use the blanket as a little ramp to propel motion back and down. Up, push, I feel a little bump of that blanket edge. Okay. And give me a little propelling forward, enough to go forward and straighten the legs. You can use blocks here if your hands don't reach. Then bend the knees. Hands don't reach the ground and go forward. Maybe you can do a little hop and down. Okay. Oh, up, down. So we're already getting into our handstand motion, jumping up. And then straighten the legs and bend the knees. Take the hands back, knees back towards the blanket. So for a little padding, if you need it, if not all good. And take your two blocks. You can have palms flat on the ground, all good. Now a little pressure for the hands, arms are loaded. Okay, so push away, make your arms long. Tuck your tailbone in, so a little roundness to the lower back. And now bring the chest through the arm, squeeze the shoulder blades in. Press away, spread the shoulders. And then lower down, squeeze the shoulders in. Next time you press away, move the shoulders away from the ears. Chest towards the ground. Shoulders up. Those same arm rotations we did. Shoulder blades moving in a circle. At the start, seated position. We're doing now in this quadrupedal position. Hands and knees position. And right now we're keeping the hands facing forward. You could do it with the hands facing out. All right. Now, let's do it like this. Let's switch it up. So blocks for the knees. So the arms are a little shorter now. Okay. So let's do it again. You can turn your hands out to expose differently. You can also, we haven't done this in a while, you can curl your fingers, make fists. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Just gets my knuckles, wrist loaded in a way that feels good. So if you want to explore knuckles and do the shoulder rotations, go for it. And then switch it up. Make it exploratory. I'm having my knuckles face forward now. You can have your hands forward, hands out. 
I'm going to turn my knuckles in a little bit. So only do this if the internal rotation of the arm feels good through the shoulder movement. All right, now, however you can, step your right foot forward. Okay. Bend a little forward into that front knee. So you're getting a hip extension in the back leg. Bring yourself upright. That back knee that's pressing down into the block, try to drag it forward. Front foot, pull it back. Bring your left hand across the knee and thigh. Take your right arm forward like a handshake. Turn the palm up. Raise the arm up. Then take the arm out, turn the arm in as you lower it down behind you, beside you. Switch, arm goes back. Rotate out, up, forward, and front. Now, step back, step behind, and then step out, step in front. So it's a kneeling position that can be done without the block, but a different feeling on the block. I have a foam block, so it doesn't bother my knee. If you had a wood block, of course, you can use a blanket or no block. All good. Then forward with the front knee. Get a little length for the back hip flexors there. And then bring yourself up. Take the right hand across the knee and thigh. So I have it just right at the end of the thigh above the knee. Left arm forward like a handshake. Arm stays straight. Arm goes up. Turn your arm in as you lower the arm behind you beside you then reverse direction arm goes back turn the arm out up forward in front step out step back then bring yourself up to standing all right so we'll come back back down on the ground in a moment okay but do like this for right now so just stand upright just gonna move these blocks out of the way hands on your hips. So now I'm going to mirror you so you can do same arm as me. Left arm out to the side, bend at the elbow, or turn at the arm in, then bend at the elbow, arm behind you. Try not to touch your back. So there's space between hand and back. Raise the hand a little higher. Lower the hand down, then bend the arm, raise the hand a little higher. Arm out, palm forward, Raise the arm up, then bend at the elbow, hand behind your head, behind your neck, towards the shoulder blades. Try not to touch the shoulders. Hand is off. Arm up, straighten it out, then bend. Up, out, do it again. Out to the side, bend, behind, lift up. Go out, raise up, over, down. Nice active mobility. So a little different than, so there's passive and active. Like I could, and you very well can. And I often do sometimes, yeah? Often sometimes. <laughs> take the hand behind the back and just let it rest there. So there's this passive stretch. And I take the hand higher up, higher up, up my back. Okay? So that is one way. And then an active way to see what is my active range of motion without using my back body to rest the hand without moving my hand up the back. So where is that shoulder mobility actively? All right, so right arm out to the side, roll the arm in, and internal rotation, then bend at the elbow, take the arm hand behind you, and try not to touch your back. See if you can lift the hand up a little higher. You'll feel it in your bicep, inner arm working. Then lower the arm towards straightening it and then raise the hand up, up the back. Lower the hand down, take the arm out, up. Now bend at the elbow, hand behind your head, down towards your neck, towards the shoulders. And notice here, as it's on my side, I can feel the chest is helping out for the arm work. So I'm going to bring those ribs in, then take the hand a little lower down. Arm up, arm down. Now to make it even harder, even more fun, both arms at the same time. Arms out to the side, roll the arms in, bend at the elbows, arms behind you, fingers touching towards each other. Try not to touch the fingers. 
Raise the hands a little higher. Then lower down, out, up, and then bend at the elbows. Palms going down behind the shoulder blades. Reach up, out, turn and make fists now. Let the fist touch in. Let the fist press in without touching your back. And detach the fist, arms out. Rotate fist and arms up, bend. Let the fist touch in. You could do it without, even harder. I'm saying for now, just let it touch. Make something a little easier. Arms up, arms out, boring down. Nice, active shoulder mobility. All right, we can do more of that on the ground, but now that we're halfway into our practice, why don't we <laughs> go upside down on our hands, yeah? So at the wall in the middle of the room, okay, if you want to do in the middle of the room, by all means, you can go on at one leg or both legs, whatever feels good. And it could just be a couple hops like that, just lifting up. You can switch legs in midair. Hopefully that shoulder mobility feels good. Wrist mobility feels prepped and primed for the hands. Otherwise, at the wall. That's how I like to practice on and off the wall. Okay, so let's go up at the wall. So turn to face a wall space, hands on the ground, and go on up any which way you'd like. So I have my hands a little wider, about shoulder width, not so wide, but shoulder width. And kicking up, I'm going to take the legs a little wider, reach with the heels up, that press with the hands down, shoulders up to the ears, and imagine you had an extra pair of hands, peeling those ribs, chest, chest down, ribs in, and then come down and rest. I know instructions upside down get a little tricky. So when I was saying peeling the chest down, what does that mean? I'm saying down, and ribs in. So as the arm goes up, this part of the chest, down and in, shoulder blades go up. You could puff the chest up, keep in mind, yeah? That is an option. If you have that capacity, that's something you're trying to explore. That would be needed, especially if you're trying to arc back and drop back into a uh, upward bow pose, sometimes called wheel pose. If you're trying to flip over, the chest would need to puff. The ribs would need to come out, yeah? But for right now, for our sake and purpose, keep, for right now, this exercise we did earlier, arm goes into flexion and elevation, chest down, ribs in. This part of the chest down. Now, not to be confused with the other instruction I throw at you, lift your chest up. So how do you lift your chest and keep this in? So just play with it. The main thing behind some of this, do this, don't do this, or watch for this, yeah, is just to see, right, is your arm doing the work of the arm, or is your spine or ribs, chest, doing this arm flexion? So I want to be able to get this arm this far back <laughs> without throwing my ribs forward or chest forward. Bring the chest down, ribs in, Ooh. So that's what I'm saying when I say peel the chest down, ribs in. Let's go up again, okay? So any which way you wanna go up, I'm gonna turn the hands out for my second round, okay? Hands, shoulder width are a little bit wider. I kick up, I'm gonna kick up with the opposite leg. You go on up with whichever leg you like. Again, peeling the chest down, ribs in. Shoulder blades up, 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 up. Legs up, straighten through the legs, straighten through the arms, tuck your chin, look to your feet, and breathe here. And then come down, one heel can stay at the wall, other leg can come down, or you can push off, come down however you like. So, let's do one more. Take a little break, wrist flexion like this. Breathe here. All right, so now if you're up for it, earlier when we we're doing our rock and rolling, yeah, maybe some of you were feeling that you have the ability to, you can use blocks here, to jump up okay, and then down. Go forward and up, so both feet coming off the ground. Okay, and then without the blocks,
So that's quite a bit of load for the hands and wrists. And of course there's balance play. Even if you don't hold it, right? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. This depends on <laughs> quite a bit practice, but also what is going on with that motion uh, getting ourselves up. So if you want to try that at the wall, both feet up, go for it. You don't have to roll up, but the idea that if you want to play with rock and rolling into a little handstand, little tuck position, go for it. Or at the wall, hands, I'm bringing a little bit closer in now, little shoulder width or a little narrower. And I'm going to bend both knees, hop and kick, feet up. I can keep the feet at the wall, hover and come down, or extend up, push down, lift up, come down. Whew. All right. <laughs> now we'll do more shoulder mobility work and then come back to some hand standing at the end. All right, we got about 20, 25 minutes more to go. You feeling okay? Take a wrist. Hopefully you're feeling good. Take a little wrist. Did I say take a wrist? Take a wrist break. Yeah. Take a wrist, man. <laughs> Whatever that means, yeah? So your backs of the hands are pressing in like this. All right, so let's do our, so knees on some padding, hands on the blocks. Okay. So now let's do an arm circle like this. So press the hands down, straighten the arms, a little tuck of the tailbone, lower back should feel a little bias towards rounding the back. Stand your left hand, raise your right arm up. So there's that flexion of the arm again. And take the arm out to the side, roll the arm in. When it goes behind you, bend at the elbow, hand up the back without touching. Whew. Arm out, forward, palm forward, and then hand down, square up with hands and knees, press down. Let's do the other side. I have a little critter, a little bug. Just bit me. <laughs> I don't know what that thing was. <laughs> All right. That's the beauty of practicing outdoors. Yeah. All right. So right hand stays. Left arm goes forward. Arm up by the ear. Take the arm out. Turn it in. Then bend at the elbow. Hand up the back. Any amount. Without touching your back. And arm out. Arm up. Forward. Down. Again, we'll do, but this time, top arm, when it goes forward, right arm bringing forward, bend at the elbow without touching your head or neck, arm forward, out, bring it back, bend, arm behind, Whew. arm out, forward, down. All right, let's do the other side. Left arm goes up, bend at the elbow, hand above, behind the neck, Ooh. Arm forward, arm behind, bend, rotate, lower down. Continue. This time, knees on the blocks. All right. Right arm goes up. Bend at the elbow. Arm behind the head. Arm up, out, rotate in. Arm behind you. Bend at the elbow. Arm out. Come forward, hand down. Go up again. Arm up, bend at the elbow, arm back. Arm behind, rotate around. I'm going a little faster now. <laughs> We've got quite a bit of wrist shoulder mobility going on. Come off. I talked about having a chair. Do another handstand, take a little break. <laughs> handstand is the break, or you can do downward dog, okay? See how your shoulders are talking to you now. Uh, after you have, ooh, that little bug bit me good. I don't know what that little critter was. It was so tiny, tiny little bug, but it gave me a nice, nice little bite. Um, go ahead, try a handstand, downward dog, do upward dog, plank pose, upward dog. See how your shoulders, arms are talking to you now after some of this shoulder mobility work we've been doing while I get this chair out. All right, so now... Continue with your practice, of course. You can always pause the video and come back to this segment here. 
So now watch what I'm doing. So we're playing with this arm flexion range because this is, if you can see it, extend the hand. This is hand standing arm and that's just one arm. So now exploring that like this. So I have my hand on a chair. I have some blocks nearby, I'll show why. Okay, so that'll be for the forearms. So if it feels good, good stretch here, stay here, pressing your palm down into the chair. Otherwise come down to the <clears throat> opposite forearm. And just hold this for about 30 seconds. It could be longer, maybe a minute. I'll just hold for about <clears throat> 30 seconds. Just a passive stretch. Now, you can extend the hand that's going to make it harder, like handstand hand or palm down. <laughs> so you can choose. I want to keep the palm down, but in case you want it harder, you can lift it up. Now press that palm more down into the chair seat. So you're getting a stretch turned on more on the underside of the arm. Press the palm more down into the chair seat. A little bit heavier. A little bit more. And now whatever's on the ground, the knees, the feet, that forearm, press down, this arm, hand, lift up off the chair without turning your chest. Any amount, lift the hand up off the chair, press that bottom forearm down, hand down, palm down, deeper stretch, go deeper into the stretch, lowering down. Push with the hand, press with the hand, palm into the chair, any amount more. You could regress it by not being on your forearm, you can be on your hand with the opposite hand. That opposite forearm or hand on the ground, push down, lift the hand up off the chair. Lift up, lift up, up, and down. Do it with the hand in handstand position. Fle uh, extend it. Press the edge of the hand down into the chair, and then lift up any amount. Shoulder up by the ear. Hand down, come down. Ooh. You're going to be in happy shoulders for the rest of the day. They will feel tired. They may even feel sore something known as DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Okay, so don't be surprised if you feel a little sore in the arms later. That's a lot of work for the arms, but good stuff, yeah? Deep cleaning for the shoulders and arms. All right, other side we're doing. So one option is to hand on the ground the whole time like this. Okay. If you can tolerate a little bit of a deeper passive stretch, you can bring the forearm down on the block or maybe on the ground. But not so much where you sink into the spine. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you're choosing to do. <laughs> I always like to correct, self-correct. So the rules of the playground here are not so strict. They're just in context to what are we trying to do. Right now I'm trying to get as much independent arm, shoulder, uh, arm flexion without spine extension. All right, now we're gonna increase that pressure of the palm into the chair seat. Tuck the tailbone slightly and keep the lower back feeling rounded. Press the palm more into the chair seat. If there's pain, you don't push so more or come up off the ground. Right? So you're on your hand, not your forearm. Otherwise, press more, palm pressure into the chair. Press more, a little bit more, maximum effort, palm through the chair. And now don't change anything except what's on the ground, press it down and then lift that hand up off the chair. Even if it doesn't lift, try to make it feel lighter. Off the chair, arm straight, and hand back down. Come a little lower with the chest. Do it again, palm pressing down. Press down, press, press, press. Then lift up, press the bottom hand down. You can make a fist, squeeze, push that forearm elbow down, lift the top arm up, hand down. Handstand position of the hand an extension of the hand. Press the edge of the hand into the chair seat, and then lift the edge of the hand up, shoulder up by the ear. Lift the hand up higher, arm up, and then lower down. Woo. Calm down. Bring yourself into a standing position, fold forward. Hold on to your ankles, fold forward and down. Shoulders away from ears. Hands to your hips, watch your head as you come on up. All right, so now 
that little bugger <laughs> itching that area with that bug. You know, when we were doing the hands in the quadrupedal position, I just saw that critter just sit right there. It was so tiny. I didn't know what it was. It looked cute. It was crawling up. And now that part itches. It bit me there. Yeah. So that's how it goes. With outdoor practice. All right. So now let's take care of the wrist a little bit more. And we'll go more handstand. Okay. So arms here. Interlock your curl your fingers, knuckles. Squeeze knuckles in towards the waist. And then knuckles out, out and down, down and in, in and up. Out, down, in. And switch direction. Good. And release, shake it out. Back to handstands of your choice, or you can do a downward dog. Just watch if you like, any which way. It's your practice. Make it fun and exploratory for you. So, like I said before, if you have handstand in the middle of the room, you might be surprised going up. And I do find, I mentioned before, going up into the knees bent position, legs out to the side. There's something about catching myself like this. It just makes the hand standing a little easier. There's a wider base or a pelvis region, even with the legs wide. Oop, there, I was reaching for the wall. Yeah. Sometimes going out with the legs wide, but then my lower body, even though it's upside down, you can think of it as the upper body in that region, in that position, it gets a little heavier. When I have the knees bent, compact up to the side, for me, I don't know about you, it just feels a little easier to control. You can try it at the wall like that. So when I bend, jump, I take the knees out. And then shoulders up. A little easier now after all that shoulder mobility work. Shoulders up by the ears. Ribs in. Chest peeling down. And knees together. Feet down resting. Sometimes I'm upside down, I have to adjust that air pod. So I use my arm to move the <laughs> air pod in, otherwise it tends to drop out of the ear. So you can try again and again and again. Hand standing. In previous practices, handstand jams, we've also timed our handstand. So if you had a timer app of some kind, you could put the phone down, go up, five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds, good place to be, yeah? At the wall, okay? Or maybe you go a little longer. You want to try again, middle of the room, you can go for it. Okay? You can try scissor kicking the legs, one leg up, one leg coming up or staying a little bit more parallel to the ground to counter that balance. So I felt good wrist pressure there, no, no pain. And I was able to pump with the arms, shoulders up to the ears. So you can try again like that or at the wall. Okay? I'm just encouraging for those of you that do practice. Of course, in a future practice, we could work on how to fall out of handstands. So if you're doing in the middle of the room, some, what are some go-tos so you feel your exit strategy is safe and well? Of course, in the grass, it's a great place. We can just tumble out. Okay? So go on up one more time. Last handstand, I'm going to bring the hands a little narrower, fingers pointing forward, switch with my non-dominant leg kicking up. Shoulder blades up, arms up, arms straight, leg straight, then taking one leg down and bringing it up, lifting up, other leg down. Bring it up. Lift everything up now. Everything up. Bend at the knees. Push the feet off the wall. And come on down. It's time to rest. Let's do our hands, feet on hands position. I'm using a blanket here. Coming down. Lift one foot up. Place this hand there. Bend the knees. Let your ribs, chest rest over the thighs. Fold forward.
And if you can, straighten the legs. If it feels okay for the hamstrings, knees, and calves, go for it. Straighten those legs. Let the mount of the foot, the toes of the feet press into the heel of the hand. Bring your chest down. Bend your elbows out to the side. Shoulders away from the ears. Neck and head down. And release. Go forward. Hands to hips. Lift the chest and head. Come on up. All right. So let's take it down to the ground. Like we did earlier, wrist mobility. Have a block nearby. We'll use it. Interlock your fingers and those wrist rolls. Switch direction. Switch interlock. Switch direction. And the work we did earlier. Okay. So I'm on the side of the, the pinky side of the forearm. Hand down, hand up, down, up, then level, bring in like a gate, out, use the other hand to lock motion at the forearm, go in, in and down, down and out, out and up, in, down, out, switch direction, down, out. Way. Okay, you could do it with a fist like we did in the beginning. I'm keeping the palm open, hand open. Down, reach up, down, reach up, Hold the hand in, out, in, out, and down, in, up. Switch direction when you're ready. All right. Now, any kind of resting position of your choice. Okay. So you can do legs up the wall. You can do, uh, if you have a plow pose, I like to use these two blocks. I'll show here. So the blanket is for my shoulders. I press into the blocks, lift up, bring the blocks around without hitting the wall, and then placing the tops of the feet or toes. So this is a modified version with knees bent. You could do with legs straight. I'm just going to bring the blocks in, bring the knees in, and I can take my arms behind my calves. Bring those blocks in a little bit more. So that's an option if you want to do that. If there's something else you'd like to do to bring a quietness, a calmness, down regulating from the activity of the practice, go for it. Come out of this one, take the blocks back behind me, I stack them up behind buttocks, hips, so I come into landing into this bridge pose, the shoulders supported on the blankets, buttocks, hips supported on the blocks, sun hitting against me, feels really nice, just the right amount of sun and shade, close your eyes. Rest here and let go from the effort of the practice. up with the blocks down Maybe the lowest setting Y Let the knees move to one side 
Knees and thighs drop to the other side. Back to center, lift the hips, move the blocks further down. And I want this blanket off my back and just for my neck and shoulders. Sorry, for my head and neck, not for the shoulders, above the shoulders. And then these blocks I can use behind the knees. I can feel nice. I'm going to take my hands to my buttocks and just lift and tuck buttocks flesh off my back. So just move it away, adjust the blanket as needed, arms out, and just give myself a complete sense of rest the bones of the body that we move, the joints of the body that we articulated, the muscles we engage, disengage, dis disarm everywhere. Let go and let loose. Soft, slow breath in. Smooth, long exhale out. And at your arms, just bring your hands over your chest. Just connect with your breathing. Bring awareness there. Take a soft, long breath in. Smooth, long breath out. Take the hands over your head. Just the heel of the hand can rest against the eyebrows. Slide the hands to beside the head, beside the temples, down the jawline, chin, and one leg at a time. Bend the knees, take one arm overhead, roll to that arm side. Push off the ground, come on up, and we're done with our handstand jamming for the day. So, thank you for joining. Thank you for playing. Hope that was fun for you. Take from it any little bit, whatever you enjoyed. Explore it. Come back to the video, different segments of the video. Build from that part. Take care of your wrists. Take care of your shoulders. Explore the core work and get into any kind of handstands as many times during the week. Daily if it's up to you, if it's up for you. And uh, keep on having fun. I'll see you again soon my YouTube channel. If you'd like to sign up for my email list, I'll be having future handstand classes in a Zoom room, which I was doing before, but this month I had a conflict of timing on Thursdays with uh, the teacher development program that I'm taking with Carrie Awerko. So she has guest lectures, giving classes, and uh, sometimes a lecture or a, yeah, just uh, a talk on different, all kinds of information and knowledge on movement education and i'm really enjoying it so this particular month the conflict of timing was on thursdays so next month in april i'll have more thursdays open and i'll have it in a zoom room so i can watch you practice your handstands give you uh, 
feedback on your handstands and we can interact live together. But for now, I'm posting these on my YouTube. So thanks for practicing along on my channel. Okay. If you'd like to make any contribution to the class, I usually leave a link in my video caption there. Any amount you can contribute to support my work is greatly appreciated. I thank you for that. And then feel free, like I said, to sign up for the email. Go to my website, zane.yoga, and sign up for my email list or just message me. and I'll put you on the email reminders for future Zoom classes. All right, peace and love. Take good care. Have a beautiful day ahead.